Morning, Art Hostage here, and we're going to do another episode. Now, today's episode, right, is some breaking news that's come in, right, which yet again shows the connections between the art crime world and the art world in general and the drug world, the drug cartels. And the reason for that is that the art world is still largely unregulated. Okay, and everything is kept secret, and there are multi-million dollar deals happening every day in cash, okay, off the books, works of art are being traded, they're being held in places like the Geneva Freeport and Freeports around the world, um, and it's a way that they can get around money laundering laws, because if you have got, say, a hundred million dollars worth of are not, not necessarily stolen, legitimate, that you've bought at auction, and you put it in a, um, a free port, you know, a safety deposit box, just giving control of that as collateral within the uh, drug world can be very, very good for the way they keep the um, fluid running through the, uh, um, the drug world. And what's happened recently, right, as there's been a big drug bust in uh, the Netherlands that's been announced, right, here's the first article, right, it says narco traffic and works of art the broker, Diana favoured the, inac the inaction of Raphael Imperiali you know, the mafia godfather and the um, co-partner with uh, Daniel Kinahan um, and Edin and Targi in the uh, Dubai super cartel that was extradited to Italy a couple of months ago. <clears throat> now, this is a result of, um, a lot of this is a result of the Encro chat that Andy Craig cracked a couple of years ago. I mean, the Encro chat is the gift that keeps giving for law enforcement. But also, it's all part of the Kinahan thing as well. It all joins the dots. So now we're going to read the, now I've, I've translated this from Italian. So it might not sound, the grammar might not be that good. And the way I speak makes it even worse. Right, here we go. Oh, God, what's happened here? Right. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, it's all gone punchy, right? You see, that keeps reloading. Anyway, narco traffic, right? He had helped Raphael Imperiali, one of the most important drug traffickers in the world. Andrea Diana, the alleged drug trafficking broker, as well as an art dealer with a gallery in Amsterdam arrested in the investigation of the Milan DDA and the flying squad that led to 31 precautionary measures. It emerges as an international broker of high criminal depth in constant contact with both South American narcos and with one of the most important drug traffickers in the world, Imperiali Raphael writes the investigating judge Carlo Otone Di Marchi of the Court of Milan in the 900 pages of pre precautionary order. Amongst, among other things, as emerged from the ordinance, Diana himself, so, sorry, Diana himself in some chats, right, that's this is from the Encro chat, say crack, to have provided an important support for Imperiali's inaction. In other words, um, when Imperiali was on the run, he would provide safe houses, Diana. And he wrote in August 2020, when my friend was in Europe, he was a, and was he, here, let me just say that again. And he wrote in August 2020, when my friend was in Europe, he was a fugitive and he always with me, we lived in the same house. And yet the investigating judge also notes that Diana has, constant relationships with local and international criminal environments and connections with the world of organised crime in Campania. In a chat, he said, I have an agreement with friends in Naples and they take offence if I start working with others with coca, meaning cocaine. The operation of the state police coordinated by the public prosecutor's office at the court of Milan, DDA, and aimed at dismantling a criminal association aimed at the sale of drugs, involved almost 200 agents on the national territory and abroad for the execution of the precautionary measure against 31 people, 
That means they arrested them with strong ties to South American traffickers, fugitives and leading exponents of organised crime. During the activity in Lithuania, Spain, Holland and in Lombardy, Piedmont, Tuscany, Lazio, Campania and Puglia, with searches and seizure of current accounts of two logistics and transport companies located in Peru, no, in Peru, that's in Italy, not Peru, right, in the province of Milan and in Como. Searches also at a club in Colonio Monzais, attributed to a well-known group of motorcyclists, well, that's the Hells Angels, two of which were involved in a significant importation of hashish into the national territory of Italy. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> With the judicial coordination of Eurojust, the Dutch Judicial Authority, right, I've got to go back again, it's just refreshed. I don't like these things, right, I'm not good at this thing, right, there we go, where are we? Um, right, um, sorry, I've lost my place now, right, um, Oh, yeah, look, with the judicial coordination of Eurojust, the Dutch Judicial Authority is carrying out um, a request by the Public Prosecutor's Office of the Court of Milan, impounding the modern art gallery, Art 3035 Gallery, located in Amsterdam and deemed to be of the investigations, a place to launder part of the proceeds of drug, traffic drug trafficking accumulated by the broker who lives in the Netherlands through fictitious sales of works by famous exponents of the world of street art, including Banksy. So they've been making up fake bank um, receipts for selling Banksy's and using it to launder drug money. Right? Banksy was also the nickname, right, that Andrea Diana used on the Encro chat. These people were so sloppy, didn't they? They tried to do it to be funny and flash. They thought they were secret, but it wasn't. Andy Craig and his team cracked the Encro chat. And that's where all this is coming out from. I told you, it's the gift that keeps giving. It's going to go on for years, what they got off the Encro chat. Anyway, Andrea Diana, 41 years old and born in Terraciana, to whom custody was applied in prison and already arrested in the past for drug abuse in Italy, but also in Germany, was at the same time an established entrepreneur and owner of a gallery of art in Amsterdam, the Art 3035 Gallery, which was... The money was put up by Raphael Imperiali. He's just a front man. And, writes the investigating judge, from the study of various articles and posters found on the web, the attention in the investigation was concentrated on the figure of the art entrepreneur, not only be because man without profits declared in Italy in 2018, he started the art gallery out of nothing, rather for the works and artists he, tr he treated. And amongst these, there is, there is just Banksy, considered one of the greatest exponents of street art, whose true identity is still unknown. In the nearly 900 pages of ordinance, the chat talks between the suspects um, and reported, and it is explained, the protagonists of this criminal story chose the nicknames of the encrypted phones based on their passions or political orientations. And Diana called herself Banksy, well, himself. Right. Um, from one of the chats of June 2020, amongst other things, summarises the investigating judge, it emerged, emerges that the alleged narco traffic broker had come up with the idea of using the activity of another person to reclaim €20,000 and an excuse to justify that movement of that money was due to the purchase of a Banksy painting. The investigating judge also notes that Diana has constant relationships with local and international environment criminals and connections with the world of organised crime. In a chat, I have an agreement with friends in Naples, right? Well, we've just read all this, right? Well, OK, right. Uh, there is also um, an entrepreneur of the web, Alberto Genovese, already on trial. Oh, it's, it's just ref refreshed again. Right, fuck this one then, right? Sorry. I'm closing this one, right, and we're going to go to another one, another article about this. I fucked that one right up, didn't I? Um, right, let's have a look here, right. Times of Malta, okay. Italy, Spain, Netherlands bust art and drugs gang. 
Authorities in Italy, Spain and Netherlands have busted an international drug trafficking network accused of using the art trade to profit to launder the profits, Italian and U EU authorities said Thursday. Dozens of arrests were made on Wednesday and a contemporary art gallery in Amsterdam was searched amongst 47 other locations as part of the operation coordinated by EU judicial agency Eurojust. The network traded cocaine shipped from Latin America and ketamine from Lithuania, um, both bought in via the Netherlands, as well as cannabis from North Africa smuggled into Spain. Euro just have just said that in a statement. Italy's interior ministry said arrest warrants have been issued against 31 people, most of them Italian, for close links with Latin American traffickers, fugitives and members of organised crime. In a bid to cover their tracks, network members used nicknames including Obi-Wan Kenobi and Pinocchio, with the Italian owner of the Amsterdam Gallery adopting the moniker of street artist Banksy, it is said. The bank accounts of two transport companies based in Lombardy in northern Italy were seized, while Eurojust said bank accounts allegedly used for money laundering were also frozen in the Netherlands. Overall, an estimated €150,000 cash was seized, as well as over 150 kilos of various types of illicit drugs. The investigation began with the identification of two restaurant owners in Milan who were suspected of running a local drug trafficking ring. As of 2020, authorities both in the Netherlands and Italy have managed to intercept large quantities of drugs. Adding, Euro just said, adding that several arrests were made in recent months, culminating in the week's act, this week's action day. So there you have it, right? Now Arthur Brand, you know him, the criminal uh, art detective, right? He's been playing both ends against the middle, and he was one of the informants on this case, right? I'm not saying he was the number one because Andy Craig had already got all the encro chat, but Arthur Brand's been doing a little bit of informing to the police. Um, to try and get himself some brownie points, right, for when um, he has to face the music on the uh, Van Gogh and the Franz Holes conspiracy that he's right in the middle of. And that's why he's been keeping his head down recently. And don't forget Arthur Brand also was giving information about Targi, right, planning to escape from the um, prison last year. Okay, and then that was thwarted by the authorities. Right, so Arthur Brand's playing both ends against the middle, which is a very, very dangerous game. I mean, it's all right like me just commenting on it and saying, which is what I think, and this, that, and the other, right? Well, Arthur Brand is what's called a participating police informant at the moment. And then once he's finished with that, and if he can get away with the uh, Van Gogh and Franz Hals case, right, he'll just go back to recovering stolen art by paying criminals and buying it back for the insurance companies. 20% of the value, anyway, right, so that's an update there, right, and it's just showing that all these little avenues, they're all crossing over, aren't they, between the art crime world, and it's because the art world is so unregulated, you know, um, it's still unregulated, it's still every day, cash gets um, changed hands, you know, and it's a way of um, doing business, if you go to a drug dealer and you say you want 100 kilos of um, narcotics, cocaine, heroin or whatever, instead of having to pay him the cash, right, you can just give him a key to a safety deposit box where there are two paintings which are worth $100 million or $10 million. And then he keeps con control of that, gives you the drugs, you sell them, you go back and you pay the man and he gives you the access to the paintings back. And you don't need, even need to use stolen art. You can... <clears throat> Raphael Imperiali and the others, right, they go to auction and they buy paintings, a million dollar Picasso, they buy it legitimately and pay for it. And then they put that into a, a free port, right, secure location, and then they can give someone the, the access to that and it's a the way they move money around. Because you can still go to Sotheby's and Christie's, okay, right, and you can, and you can buy stuff, right, and everything is confidential. You can go to um, galleries, well, they've tried to use galleries a little bit. The only thing is that galleries normally charge the retail markups about three or four times the value. So if you've got a million, if, if they've got a, um, a painting on 
a sale for one million dollars, the trade value is about two hundred thousand dollars. And even drug dealers don't want to lose that much money by laundering it. Okay, but yes, I mean it's overlapped. See, the art world is one of the very, very few games, right? The, one of the very, very few professions where it's still largely unregulated. Another one is horse racing. Okay, where you got the bookmakers on, you know, at, at, at the thing taking cash and putting it in the in the bag. Right, and also, right, gambling as well, all gambling, you know, all the sports, boxing and casinos, right, they're, the, they're the largely the, un, the last of the unregulated industries, but the art world is the biggest by far, billions, right, and that's the way they clean up a lot of the um, dirty drug money, they wash it through the art world, art washing they call it, I know we've had the term because of the Kinahans and boxing, we've had sports washing, well, they've been art washing, right, since the 70s. A lot of Brighton dealers, right, used to um, um, send a lot of, like, antiques to Italy, right, and then um, that would be uh, laundering drug money. That was in the 1970s when I was a kid. I knew about that. Okay, so there are connections, you know, and the connections are coming up. And, you know, and I'd also say, right, that Raphael Imperiali would like to get his hands, or at least control of, the Lauren Van Gogh stolen in the Netherlands in 2020, and the Franz Holes. And as I told you, Peter Roy Cock, the um, drug importer in the, from the Netherlands, who's still in jail, he had control of both of them. Now, whether he sold that control on or Raphael Imperiali, I don't know. I mean, stupid Arthur Brand was trying to tell us that Daniel Kinahan was making inquiries, but it wasn't. It was the truth was, it was Raphael Imperiali. And he tries to throw people off the scent, you see, because Arthur Brand wants to run with the hare and hunt with the hounds. And he's been very quiet recently because he's got a lot of trouble. He's been dragged into the uh, Mick Van Welly sex assault case, right? Because he's his best mate and he was involved in all that. He's under investigation for that. He's under investigation for his role in the Va Van Gogh theft from Lauren and the Franz Hole's theft from Leardham in 2020. And because they haven't been recovered yet, right, the um, Dutch authorities are just hot keeping their powder dry. Well, they'll have to face some music on that. And then worst of all, Arthur Brand's going to have to face the music for being responsible for recovering Hitler's horses, the big 20-foot statues that are going to go on display in Berlin later on this year. And they're being moved this month. I don't know when it is. I'm looking out for it. But they've been kept in storage in Germany and they're being moved to Berlin Right, in May 2020, this month. And as I said before, I hope they keep them covered up when they move them. And they've got a reinforced floor in the Citadel Museum, Spandau, in Berlin, where these Hitler's horses are going to stand. And me, right, I'm disgusted. Right, I think this is going to cause a lot of trouble because it's going to be a magnet, right, to neo Nazis. Right, to go and pay homage to, to the Fuhrer, the Third Reich, and Hitler's horses when they go on public display. But that's another story for another day. Well, I hope you like this one. I don't even know how long it is now because I've been stuck here. Right, And I'm sorry about the first article I read. Right, It kept refreshing. Right, And because it was a translated article from Italian, right, it kept going from English back into Italian. And I'm not very good with, uh, with any other language. I mean, I I'm not very good with English, right, let alone any other language. Right, as the French people call the British, they call us roast beef, roast beef, right, the ro yeah, roast beef, right, so I'm a roast beef, right, can't help it, right, but I am an old-fashioned European socialist, right, well, so you know that, right, this is an 18-minute one, right, Um. so it's going to be episode 96, Raphael Imperiali, right, involved in the art world yet again, and there's more coming on this, right? Because all of a sudden he's going to step into the picture and offer to recover the Franz Holes and the Van Gogh if he can get some of his sentence uh, reduced in Italy. And the Dutch authorities might go for that because he's in Italy serving a prison sentence of eight years. And if he can facilitate the recovery of the Van Gogh and the Franz Holes, right, it, um, the public in the Netherlands might accept that. The only other thing is, though, is that the insurance companies have paid out about $30 million. And so there's 20% of that that's on offer, which is like $6 million. 
well, I'm sure that Raphael Imperiali might want to try and stake a claim on that. Right, because that's what's um, what's happening. They're all jockeying a position, full position. See, the insurance company are more than prepared to pay 20% of the claim that they've paid out on the Van Gogh and the Franz Holes, which is about 25 or $30 million. The question is, is right, who are they prepared to pay it to? Well, they wouldn't pay Arthur Brand directly. They would pay Dick Ellis, and then he, because he's a corrupt ex-policeman. Right, and then he would pay half a brand like they did on the Picasso for, in 2018, the Saudi shape Picasso. Right, so that's we're moving forward. But at least we're getting back onto the um, stolen art trail. Okay, right, and I'm sorry I diverted off onto the drug trail, but to be honest with you, they're all involved. You know, and I do talk a lot about the Kinahans and that because that's an ongoing operation that's unfolding as we speak. Okay. Um... And there'll be more updates, you know, coming on that, right? You know, and the walls seem to be closing in on a lot of people that have been associated with um, Daniel Kinahan in the boxing world. You know, and as I predicted, right, this is going to be, the, uh, right, you know, this will be remembered as a time of the, the biggest boxing, boxing corruption scandals, right, in history. And it will bleed into other sports. You know, mark my words. And whether they they want to release it public, but all these big famous celebrity um, spokespeople, right, are all going to be arrested, or they're going to be interviewed under caution. All of them: Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, Tyson Fury, uh, Ben Davidson. You know, all the boxers, right? And then there'll be footballers: Ronnie O'Sullivan, and Snooker, Jimmy White, Kenny Dalglish. All of them, right? They'll all be interviewed under caution. Now, whether it'll leak out into the media when it actually happens, I mean, I don't know. We'll just have to see. But mark my words, right? This is a huge investigation. A huge investigation. And it's unfolding as we speak. But anyway, that's a little one there. Just a little link between the art world, art crime world, and the drug world. So, Art Hostage, episode 96, Raphael Imperiali appears again. <laughs>